let's get started. Today I'm going to talk about how initial designing to help small team at Microsoft deliver apps quickly. This is Vasavaraj Chandran. So I work at Microsoft. It's a startup, it's an agri-tech startup based on in Google. So we are building software solutions to help farmers pay. That's all. So let's talk about how the initial process works. Okay. We have this designer, okay, who's on the way to stuff. He has some designs in his right. And for each design, we have a tailor in the middle, okay. So they have HTML file and CSS file and then JavaScript file, right? They have their own books. So, so remember this guy, okay, they are going to come and we bring it again. So once the development is done, what happens next? There is this pixel matching face. Okay. So, what is this all about? Where the designers and developers sit together and they literally measure the form pixel values or like color exports and whatnot. Or I can put it this way how many of you hate this? Let's have an example. Okay. So, this is a sketch design of my example. Okay. So, we are talking about heading. Okay. There are actually two different kinds of heading. First one, section header, okay? That is a section header. And font size is 24 pixels, okay? That is what is inside the designs. And there is one more kind of header, which is panel header. So you see partner and field officers. So there will be good. Uh, field officer. They, they are called as a panel header. And if the font size is 26 pixels, then there is how we have to see it. Okay, you have to match it in the order lines. So, this is fine. So, now let's see one fine morning. Remember our designer, so come to the middle of the says, let's change the section heading to 40 pixels. Okay, and we do it. That's simple. Just change it to 40 pixels. That's it. So, we do today something. Uh, how come that modal styling header? So we are like fixing one thing and doing something else. So and you might have guessed it, right? CSS is the whole scope. You are writing so you got it right that modal styling is also using that section header to style its own modal heading and that's why it is broken. Okay. That's why this this is what we call it as side. So this is what is side. And then you have small team, like what happens usually with a bigger company is they have separate B who is writing CSS and there is separate B who is writing the JavaScript thing, right? The code logic and things. And then the things are a little bit, you know, fine. But when you are a smaller team, everyone is doing everything. So when everyone is doing everything, there are chances, there are, there are, there are, there are more chances of getting the file corrupted. So the CSS was growing huge and it was slowing down our performance of the page and as you know CSS is very good working. That is you know that is what we have that is what we wanted to avoid. So let's say I say CSS is hard. Okay. So that's the thing. I find it very hard. And if you know Ken not, he says answering the question of can I modify or delete the code without breaking anything? is difficult to answer in that kind of situation. And that's the question you should be optimizing for as you code. So that is what you need to okay. so, You should not like, break other things when you are doing something. And let's see how do we make it simple. Okay. So last year we had this revamp phase that we shifted to new code. Obviously we got in React. Okay, React is super cool. It is Declarative, component based, you get a GDPR, but a lot of our talk about that. Okay, okay. It's beautiful. So, the next thing is the style component. So, we got a next style component thing along with React. Yeah. So, those of you who don't know about style components, that is CSS in JS, CSS in Java. So, think of it. Okay. So, React got that HTML thing into JavaScript, and now these style component guys have got. CSS as a result, you know, I can see all the files in the dot JS section. Let's see the syntax about that. Okay, so how does this look like? 
this is the center. First thing you install, that's npm install. The next thing in, you import style from style components, and there is this style dot label, and there is this tactic. I don't know if you can see it. This is tactic text. If you know tactic, there is ESX can fit it. So they are like a new way of calling a function. So label is actually a function defined on style. Okay. So we don't have to worry about that. That is already taken care of and passed. Okay. And when we get out of that, there is this macro label. And so that's a normal React component. So that's a normal React component. So you can use it inside any other uh, React component. Okay. So how do we have to write it? So this is what I write it. Okay. To, so you want, basically you want to label with uh, color black, margin 0 and font size as 26. <coughs> okay. So this is how we have to write it. Uh, and I don't label is a normal layer component. Okay, so it's nothing new. So the fun thing about this is, if you see the CSS that you are writing is not a template paper, it's normal string. Okay. If you know how to style with normal React without using any of the libraries, you might find this font dash size with font size, right? That kind of thing. But this is very similar to the normal CSS like any normal characters. So, uh, what the style component guys have done is that they have kept the syntax very similar. So, if you have your own CSS or SCSS file, oh yeah, they do support SCSS. So, if you have your own CSS and SCSS files, you can just convert it into style components. I mean, they can work easily. So, the migration path is very smooth. Okay, so how does this all work? So, the, so this style is actually injected inside the head section. So, you have a head section, ball section, right? The style is injected into the head section, and there is this random CSS class which is generated. And as it's random, it it won't clash. So you won't find two classes in the same class name. Okay. So you are not out of your global scoping. So you are not out of that side of that thing. Okay. So this is like global scoping. And so this all is this, this all thing is done once the component is loaded. So once the component is comes into the screen, it just adds the random class onto the header and it just applies. Okay. And so we are talking about CSS in JS, right? Don't forget JS. JS is called dynamic. Okay. So let's see how do we do that dynamic thing? In font size. Okay. So we have to look at the info again. That font size initially was 20 pixel. Now it takes box and you expect, let's say, box or kg size. So let's say kg size is a box that you expect on annual level, right? Annual level is not very common. You expect box and then it Okay. So we are expecting some kg size as a block and we are putting it as a box thing. Okay. So we are getting, if you don't find anything, just do it default. Okay. And we have written box for g dot font of kg size. I know it's high, but this is not that high. All these kind of components, they have theme support. So the theme is nothing but a normal JavaScript object that you can define and it comes automatically. So even on the top, you don't have to send it explicitly. And so you have a theme object where the font size is defined. So you can imagine this, right? You can imagine theme as an object which has uh, fonts defined as per the font sizes that your company needs. So I guess we had design system part where we were talking about design system, right? And that's how we get a link, right? So let's see how do we uh, take this into action. So this is how we have to use it. I don't label the React to object render. We can do this. So they get font size 26. Remember they are not having any AG size as a prop. Okay, so there is no AG size prop. You get D font size 26. Okay. Let's see how we add AG size. So we do AG size is equal to empty, it is medium. Then it shows bigger, right? It is 20 pixels, okay? You have to fill in the three pixels. This is super cool, right? Now we are not talking in terms of 20, 25 pixels. We are talking in terms of on major pixels. Give the advantage. Who is this guy? We, developer, right? So we are not happy. Now we like this. So this guy, like, we went ahead and we created this folder. And we 
have uh, what we call folder as file. We have label JS, we have buttons, table, panel, input, and key. The theme is theme, the theme does not look very common. So, one of the advantages is that we have theme, we already talked about theme, it does support theme. So, you can have your custom theme defined, you can override themes, you can change the uh, I guess we spoke at Kosovo and already talked about that in the context of the game. So we can use the theme with this thing also. Second thing is as well as we can look at it. That's why we should be doing this, right? Remember that Dal dating and that thing. So the thing is when you are writing bold or button JS, you are not worried about labels, right? You are just focused on that button JS, right? So that is what is the solution. And yes, it does support to the stack. So that is what you need. That might be cases when you want to style, uh, let's say, body tag or something like that. Then you can use those styles. But you know, make sure you don't overuse it because you're like going away from that global scope. And you press the code to some other and you can use it. So, one point I want you to talk about is. Remember, this is a subject tree, like the new project. Okay, so this is the subject. Okay, couple change. So, and find one thing that project when it comes up and says, hey, we have to get started with this new project. And it's super urgent that we have to kind of finish this, this one. Okay, so new project idea, new designs, you know. By the way, we had convinced our designers to reuse the components, but they can have their own different team. But, but let's say what developer things. So, no, no, we can't like see so much together again, right? So, that is what we use this because we have like so much of other stuff to do. We don't want to do the same things again, so, margin zero, pixels, whatnot. So, we want this, can we use this? So, this is what we have. Right? This is a subject inside the main project, right? So, we are like moving into a new project, we have something to use from the old project. It can come in place, but you might be doing the problem for the person. You have to maintain multiple sources, it is part of the picture, and kind of places because they are asking individual returners to fix their own things. And you don't have a central copy where you can uh, ask everyone to refer to. That is always good, right? You can have central copy that is for the best one. We were actually looking for some road. Okay, so we were like roaming around with JPL and search and like Googling and Stack Overflow and all that. We want to use so, and this is what the box says. I don't know if it's visible, but still, I really love Projects tend to grow over time, and occasionally, some piece of project can be useful elsewhere in other projects. For example, just being a generic testing tool gives birth to many packages. One of them is just snapshot. That is not used in other projects like snap ideas and points. This is like, cheers, right? This is what we need. This is what we want. We have some project which is having some code, we need to go to the Okay, so. And let's talk about YAN a bit because we are coming to YAN here. So, YAN is fast, reliable, secure dependency manager, and it is maintained by Facebook. So, we don't have to worry about So, what is YAN box? This overall. So, it's, it says to organize your code base into reusable packages. Normally, different folders with their dependencies for the Okay, Let's see, I mean, there are already ready players. You can see uh, GitHub repos of uh, React, Apple, and Vue. You will find the app of this is there. Let's see the second thing. The step one. So, step one is you have to add that flag, workspaces, experimental. Yeah, they do say that they experimental because they want to get their feedback from the community. Which is pretty simple. So this command Yes. So first thing, set up the plan. Okay. This is set up. This is the one thing, one nice one time thing that you have to do. So this will add box passes experimental into your YARN RC file into your OS home directory. Okay. 
So we are not writing that buffer slash, buffer slash, style slash, you know, index versus whatever. Okay, so we are just doing style. We don't know right? uh, who, has, who has written that style code. Okay, so that's super awesome. So we are using mileable AC size energy, so it is bigger, right? We so just try and make it. Let's not give anything and let's see if it works. So it works at the three four size. Okay, and let's try to give. It's a medium thing. Wait, wait, wait. So it does support all the hot modules. It just doesn't think that you have help for your code setup. So it won't break anything. It's just your organization of the stuff. So let's get back. How we you know wait ahead and build agro style components, which is not it's nothing new, it's just map over style components. We have got that style code there, label, input, buttons, this is all on. this is all for at least. Okay. There is this dogs, data, and you can play around, you don't want to use it, you can just play around both and move there, okay. Let's talk about the database. First thing, use style components. So we use style components, you know, that made our life easier. CSS is made really easy with that style components thing. And you call it YAML office. So YAML office makes your code easy for sharing and producing. So you can, you are now writing independently when you share can you need it. It gets you out of track dot dot slash dot dot slash can. So this is super awesome. This is what I like the most. You are not writing import and your label from, you know, dot slash, I don't know what it is, dot slash. And you know, it gives you flexibility of, you know, moving your code base from one folder to other folder, you never know that some requirement comes in. Now you have to make, turn this file into a directory, you don't want to, you know, break anything else. So, it will help you. For the same, it lets you write code into more decoupled way. From this way, you are not, so your, your big app is now into smaller, smaller app, chunks. And that's how it is. I don't know if that's tough, but software you get. Last is my favorite. Debugging that is what we do most of the time, right? So it will help you pass up the code. Because you are just you know, debugging a small portion of the code, not the entire thing. And you are not worried about writing anything else. Thank you so much. This is Masavara Sunna. This is my GitHub. You know, my GM is open. Come say hi. And I'm saying to people.